Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, president of the Open to Hope Foundation, and I'm here today with Dr. Andy Ho, and we are excited to have him. He is from Hong Kong and does research on grief and loss in Hong Kong. There's a heavy traditional taboo on death and dying in the Chinese context because we often relate death and dying with that bad luck. Um, we avoid cemeteries. Um, we don't have four floors in, in, in the buildings because in the Chinese language, four it sounds exactly like death in the Chinese language. So all the four floors, 14, 24s, everything with fours are gone. Um, we see a funeral car at the end of the road and we walk the other direction because we don't want to be contaminated with that bad luck. So it, it is a big issue. I never see Chinese people buy any property right next to a cemetery because you just don't do that. It's, it's in our culture. I think the curtain between life and death curtain is, is it's easily removable because we're so afraid of death in a sense, but we're also very connected to it because we worship our ancestors. And we have these festivals where we go back and sweep our ancestors' grave. So it, it's, it's, it's ambiguous in a way, in terms of how we see death and dying. That's very interesting. Now, does that make it difficult at all to help people who have had a loss as far as the grieving process goes? Well, I think uh, in more recent years, we have done a lot of research looking at how older people feel death and dying in the Hong Kong, the Chinese context. And we discovered that older people do... Um, they're actually very open to talking about death and dying. What we found is the middle-aged generation, they're much less willing to talk about this because they think if I talk to another person about death and dying, it would accelerate the, 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 the death. So what we found the phenomenon is older, older patients want to talk about death and dying. They want to make end-of-life care decisions. They want to make advanced care planning. But when they open this and open this up and talk to their, their, their adult children, they can't get this across. And what, I think what we really need is to, to have an open platform of communication where children and parents can talk openly about this because this is vastly important. And, and how do you see that as happening? What kind of intervention? Or what do you suggest people do if their kids won't talk about it? Well, there, I think over the past decade, there has been a lot of life and death education in the community that really opens up people's eyes and opens up the mind to, towards what life and death is, is really about. And I think the continuation of that educa oh, public education process is important. I think we have to start education from not just the elderly perspective, start from a very young age. I think what... what one thing that's really important that has been happening is the, the transformation of the education system. We used to have a three-year ed university education system, which a person goes into university and, and just goes straight into the major. And now, two years ago, we had a, a reform, and now it's a four-year education system, and we have a one-year foundational uh, year. And that foundational year, we're, we're able to implement life and death education into the university context. And I think we have to expand that education into the elementary school, into high school, so, so children from a year, very young age can get a wide spectrum of what life and death is. Now this is in Hong Kong. Are you able to move things to mainland China? Um, uh, hopefully. I think I'm, you know, there, a lot of um, charitable organizations are starting to build hospices in, in China, which has been a very neglected area of development in the past, but I think over the past five, six years or so, it, it's, it's becoming much more prominent and people are getting help that they need. In terms of the education, I think it would take a longer time in that aspect. Well, thank you so much for being on this YouTube today. Thank you very much. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, and this is a video from the Open to Hope Foundation, and thanks for tuning in.